If people have lower the carbohydrates, depending on what their uh, blood glucose monitor recommends and what foods are good, so they've found that right carbohydrate level and then they're losing weight. Have you experienced with your patients or your clients that you might see, they hit a weight loss stall and they can't understand why they can't lose weight? What's happening there? I think you know the answer here, but we call it non-scale victories and that's what we want to have relevance to. Remember that feeding study where we put the drips in people's arms and we fed them nutrients and we could control how much muscle or bone they were forming? So on a healthy diet, you're likely to be reversing, hopefully, osteoporosis, building lean muscle at the same time you're losing fat. So if you've got two tissues going up, two tissues, which by the way, are strongly associated with longevity and health, then that could offset any apparent weight loss on the scale. So there's a couple of different ways to look at this. So number one, the mirror test. How do you look in the mirror? I mean, the mirror doesn't really lie. Number two, you can do what we call a waist circumference measure. Now, the waist circumference measure is actually my preferred measure, but you need to do it in a certain way to make sure it's reproducible and accurate. Now, the way we get taught in medicine is that we tell people to measure around their waist and, you know, sometimes it's between, you know, the bottom of the ribs and the top of the waist or, and it's all very varied and it, it's very difficult to get a reproducible measure. And also if somebody has what we call a pendulous abdomen where the stomach hangs down, then how do you know you're getting it around the maximum girth? And as people lose weight, you know, are they measuring it at the same level? Now, if you lie flat on your back, then the pendulous abdomen goes away. Gravity just brings it back and you you just end up with a a, a vertical mound that is perfectly centred. And then if you wrap the tape measure around at the level of your belly button, then that is completely reproducible. You can always hit that level every time you measure. So my recommendation is to lie on your back, wrap a tape measure around the level of your belly button, just give it a bit of a cinch so it's always the same tension, and that is your measure. And that will tell you about these non-scale victories. Because a lot of people come in, they say, I'm still losing weight, my clothes are getting looser, but I'm obsessed by the scale and the scale's not moving. And the whole point is that that's because you're probably getting healthier. You've probably got more muscle than you used to. You've probably got more bone density. You know, we frequently see bone uh, osteoporosis actually reverse. And this is something that in medical school we were taught never happens. But how many people know what bone is made of? Every You ask people what bone is made of and they'll say one thing, calcium. But calcium is only a fraction of it. So in actual fact, bone is a scaffolding of protein in which you have other minerals like calcium and fancy things called hydroxyapatite, phosphate, so on and so forth, that get impregnated into that protein scaffolding. So you absolutely need a high-protein diet to build bone. And this has actually been proven in a randomised controlled trial. It was some Australian researchers, I think it was back in 2002, and they came up with a, that was still back when everybody was saying, oh, it's all about calcium. So they gave some people with osteoporosis. So these were males and females over the age of 65, so postmenopausal. They gave them some calcium. And because we know that vitamin D helps you absorb calcium, they gave them vitamin D as well. And then they looked to see if they could reverse osteoporosis. And what they found is that reduced the decline in bone mineral density, it it controlled the progression, but it didn't seem to reverse it. And that sort of makes sense because our bodies, if we need more calcium, our bodies will break down bone to get at that calcium. Our bone is basically a calcium bank, so it will break down. But if you're having regular calcium coming in, then you reduce your body's need to break down bone to get at that calcium. But if you're not putting in protein, you're not giving the body all the ingredients. Remember this whole recipe thing we talked about, missing ingredients? If you're not putting everything in, then you're not allowing the body to rebuild the bone. So then these researchers did something very clever. They divided the study participants into three groups based on their protein intake. And what did they find? In the group with the highest protein intake, the top tertile, 
they actually were reversing their osteoporosis. So you've got postmenopausal females who are growing more bone density in their hip joint, in the, in their hip bone, what we call the neck of the femur. So this is just absolutely fabulous. So and it just gives visibility to this whole thing that you actually can build these healthy tissues on a healthy diet. And of course, that's going to be shown on the scale. So your weight will sometimes go up. So let's not focus on the number. Let's look at the waist circumference. 